Okay, we're going to go through the cooling system. So out here in the generation room, we have two pipes, coolant mains. The upper pipe is the hot coolant from the engines going to the radiators. The lower pipe is the return coolant coming back from the radiators to the engines. Okay, we're in the radiator room. We're going to continue looking through the cooling piping system. So again, we have the hot coolant piping coming across the top, the uh, coolant return down low. Now I want to point out uh, on the piping system, here we have some typical butterfly valves. These are quarter turn valves. Generally, if the handle is pointed parallel to the pipe, it's in the open position. At 90 degrees to the pipe, it's closed. These valves have small tags on them. The uh, NO tags indicate a valve that is normally open. And then here we have an NC tag that indicates that the valve is normally closed. So it's really important in the piping system to become familiar with the valves and their function. So then, Continuing on with the tracing of this piping, we have the hot coolant piping comes across, up and over the top of the radiator. Above the radiator, we have an isolation valve on the top. So each radiator can be valved off separately if it needs to be serviced. We also have an air bleed line on top of the radiator to allow us to get the air out of the top of the radiator tank. Then on the bottom, we have the return piping that comes out the bottom, and then there's another isolation valve down below. There's also a drain valve there that allows us to drain down the radiator when it's valved off to be uh, serviced. And then in the return piping we have a thermometer and this allows us to be able to monitor the temperature coming back in the piping from each radiator. Now the other part of the piping system in every cooling system is the expansion tank. And over here we have a glycol expansion tank mounted up high on the wall. It has to be mounted up high to give us positive pressure on the system. This uh, expansion tank allows the glycol to expand and contract as the temperature goes up and down. Under normal operating conditions, it should be about two-thirds full. So you can look at the sight gauge. That's part of the daily check. Make sure you're up about two-thirds. If you get a little low, there's a point here for adding glycol. Now, I want to make note here. This uh, valve is tagged, normally closed, open only for adding coolant, ethylene glycol only. Uh, you have to add the same brand and the same mixture of glycol to the system as what is already installed. So you need to make sure, verify what is in the system and then only add the same product. And generally this should be bought pre-mixed, uh, usually 50-50, sometimes 60-40 with a treated water. You don't ever want to add local water to the system uh, because the minerals in it can clog up the cooling system. So to add glycol you would just open the valve here, put the hose in the barrel, hand pump it till you get back up to your two-thirds level shut the valve off and that's how the cooling system works. Now we're going to go through the operation of the radiators themselves. Okay, each radiator is ducted out the wall. Where it penetrates the wall we have a motorized damper. When the radiator is not operating this damper is closed. Then when the radiator operates this little motor operator turns 90 degrees, opens the damper to discharge the air out through the wall. Associated with each radiator is an air intake damper. Same thing, the duct through the wall has a motorized damper on it. When the radiator operates, this damper opens to allow fresh air to come in for cooling of the radiator. And we've installed filters on these intakes that cuts down on the bugs and the dust that's brought into the room. Now the radiators are controlled by a variable speed drive. So for each radiator we have a separate panel and we'll go through the function of those panels now. So this is the variable speed drive. What this device does is it controls the speed of the radiator fan to meet the cooling load. Just speeds it up, slows it down as the load varies. So we're going to go through normal operation. This is the main breaker on off switch. This should always be left in the on position. The only time you would ever turn it on off is if you had a failure and you need to work on something. So when it's on, then we have a green power on light. There's a control mode which is normal and test. The test mode is only used for a technician when they're trying to program the panel. Uh, so you should never turn this to the test mode. Just leave it in normal. Then over here we have a VFD mode, off, and bypass. Again, you would only turn it off if you needed to work on something. Otherwise, it stays in the VFD mode. That allows it, VFD stands for variable frequency drive. Allows it to speed the fan up and slow it down. We have a VFD fault. In the event that the uh, VFD device itself fails, and we get an alarm and it quits working, we have a bypass mode. In the bypass mode, it turns the fan to full speed and it just runs continuous. 
So if you had a failure of the control device for some reason and you were overheating, then you could turn it into bypass mode on a temporary basis and that would run and provide cooling. So I'll demonstrate how that works. When we go to the bypass mode, uh, we'll hear the fan ramp up to full speed. Okay, sometimes when the uh, VFD is first turned on or turned from the off to the VFD position, we'll get a short light and a little alarm. That's just kind of a normal part of the powering up procedure and it's nothing to be concerned about. So after a moment it clears, we're back in business here. We have our VFD mode, power on, and this system is, is clear to operate. Okay, now one other thing I want to note here is that typically when we have a two radiator system, we will set the set point uh, about five degrees apart, five to ten degrees apart. In this case, we have the first radiator set to operate at 175 degrees, so it will come on first, and then the second radiator at 180. So in times of low load, it's very common to come in and see only one radiator running. Then if your load increases on a hot summer day, you might see the second radiator come on. But that's called a lead lag function. So one radiator takes the lead, runs first, and then when it can't meet the cooling requirements, the second radiator comes on.